remember the last time that we spoke? And I offered you a hundred and fifty thousand dollars in cash. Cold hard cash. Hundred and fifty thousand. I do. I do remember. You don't know him this guy is the goat of the rag and that is high praise coming from me this guy is the goat for real so you've been at the rag for how long about to be like six years now six years old. everyone is very curious about the rag and you know firsthand how much work the rag is and it's blood it's sweat it's tears you probably take almost what seven days a week all but we never stop working every weekend we're always doing events we're doing appointments we're doing what we can yep. And I've seen just about every piece of clothing. When I'm not exaggerating, you have found more grills than anybody I've ever seen anywhere on Instagram and in real life. The people that are watching, they don't necessarily know about vintage the way that you do. So tell us about some of this stuff. And you find, as incredible as this is, this dude really finds this stuff every single day. Okay. Which one did you yeah. receive so a thousand? This, this one I got offered a thousand six hundred dollars by a very credible source in the vintage community. This around the time I got out the offer though, this shirt was like it sold for two thousand one hundred. Uh -huh. So I thought it, I didn't want to sell it as much, and I also I was attached to it, and I also was like trying to get more off it. Mm -hmm. I passed on that offer, and now that shirt's like valued way less, you know. And it's like one of those situations like where I say now, like I've learned to not do that. I've learned when the price is sounds beyond right, sure. take it, you know. But this shirt sells for so much because it ticks all the boxes. Wrestling, Stone Cold, Tyson. Tyson. That's the only time Tyson ever made an appearance in like right. WWF. So that shirt. And that's the only official WrestleMania like shirt that came out. And they only made a, a certain amount for that event. So, Absolutely. So you can imagine how many are still actually. Oh, these yeah. ones, these are iconic, the Grateful Dead. Yeah. This one's actually cool, though, because it's actually signed by the whole, I, I believe it's the wow. Olympic team from that year. From the Olympic team? Yeah. From wow. That year. That's why I've never wanted, because this is, you could see this shirt a lot. You know, it's, you could see, yeah. it's one of the Grateful Dead shirts. It could be a very common Grateful Dead shirt, but one of the reasons Not I kept it is because of the signatures. And like to place a value on that, it's almost impossible. Exactly. So a lot of people have their idea of what the rack is. And at Goodwill, we're spoiled. It's already on the rack. It's already priced. At the bins, even somewhat spoiled. It's already been combed through. There, there's not many dirty diapers. There might be. But like to find stuff like this, how many bales are you going through per day? On average. Honestly, like, let's see. Um, like, yeah, this is a good example. Like, this amount of t-shirts, and I don't want to say quality because they won't come out with all this good quality. It'll come out with, like, maybe two good shirts, and then the rest is, like, mid and below. I could dig, like, two, three boxes sometimes and pull only that out. How many how many pounds are in a box? A pound, probably like eight hundred pounds. Eight hundred pounds. So that's like couple shirts. yeah, so it's like over a thousand five hundred pounds just to pull out a couple shirts. Like, no one shows that other part. No People one shows think you that open up a bale and you go, here you yeah. go. I made a couple hundred dollars. Maybe no, in the nineties that was possible, but not now. Like this this shirt, like you said, this is might be the best for the day or a couple of days, and like outside of this, it's the mids or garbage yeah so like yeah you have to be super selective and super duper knowledgeable too so um you know i i talk a lot on the podcast about you know researching and doing the knowledge and all the stuff like that how do you keep up with this and how do you learn this because like you got to be on the trends because if yeah. anyone doesn't know for rag houses what's the next stop if you don't take it uh there's a couple but it could be the land, it could be the, the garbage, the garbage, or it could go to like a company that chops them up and uses them to like clean up mechanics. Molds, mechanics. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's, like, if, if you don't take this shirt that's worth a couple hundred dollars, it will literally go into the garbage, or they're gonna cut it up and sell it to a mechanic to put turtle wax on it. Mm -hmm. So like, you are the last line of defense on saving this stuff from getting destroyed. And like this shirt right here from Lithuania, that could have been a rag. Yeah. And that is literally a priceless shirt. Piece of history. Right. And if you don't know what it is, it goes right into the trash can and it's gone. So, like, how did you learn about this? And, like, how do you keep learning about this? 
this. I've always liked pop culture. I've always liked all these things that made it a little easier for me. But ultimately, I do keep up with trends, and I was able to learn. But the main way that I learn about the majority of any of this stuff is literally through just pure digging. Like yeah. Going out there, finding something I never even knew existed, looking it up online, finding history about it, and it teaches me from music to like history, like human history to like sports. Mm -hmm. I was not knowledgeable with sports. I think I can name every sports team in hockey, right. basketball, right. baseball, and it's literally through just finding this stuff and just learning. That's all awesome. stuff. So like this shirt right here, a lot of people, you know, they don't even know what vintage is, but this shirt, I always think about like checking off the check, the check boxes. So like this one here, we would look at the tag and we have the white liquid blue tag, which would be different from the gray one and which would be different from the one that they have today that's screen printed. And then this one here will have the single stitch on it, which that's also another indicator. And then also this one may have a date on it right here, the date of the shirt. So when you put all of these things in combination, this tag that was only made on this certain time frame, we got the single stitch and then we also have the date those are all indicators to say this would be a vintage shirt. Yeah. So, like, that's things that people have to research. They got to research the tags. Not every shirt with, shirt with single stitch is vintage. So they make present day shirts yeah. that have single stitch. But when all of this stuff is in combination, and this is the biggest key, because Fruit of the Loom shirts from certain times are going to have different tags. Hanes shirts, Gilding shirts, Liquid Blue, you name it, will all have different tags for the different eras. I don't know if, if you're seeing it yet, but like, they're making these shirts again. Yeah. So like, how do you figure it out? Or like, is it almost impossible to figure out some of those? I know like the printing isn't as crisp, but like if you've never seen the shirt or had the shirt, and we've had the shirt a few times, if you've never seen this, you don't have anything to compare it to. So like the, the reprints on the giant tags and like, it's getting crazy, man. So I don't know, what, what are your thoughts on that? I think that it's scary, just like scary, anything right? else. Yeah, like you can't, can't do much but try to stay informed but for the everyday consumer i don't think they will be informed and they can no. easily trick into paying something that's not worth it but i'll tell you this a couple of weeks ago a girl came into my store the brick and mortar store the spot she had four shirts two of them i don't know regular couple hundred dollars and she had two heart shaped boxes and i had to pass i had you to pass sure. you weren't sure i wasn't there but she, she wanted like two hundred dollars for them oh. and for that price maybe she had no idea what she had but for that price and me not being there to actually see it i had to pass because the heart shaped box that's the things everywhere now i think us as like that we are like informed in the like the vintage and stuff i feel like we should before we buy something do our homework Absolutely. make sure it's in our face like yeah. you know search it up and whatnot and that's this is a sad case of a, a successful you know business like mm -hmm. right? Vintage is doing really good to the point that people are able to profit off yeah. of fake, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just something we have, like I said earlier, we just have to adapt to it Keep as it like sellers and collectors. I'm like, actually, I think there's like a really old, like, trash or anything. This one I actually got from someone, but I rarely do that too. That, one, that one's awesome. Yeah. 80s Thrasher. That one's excellent. All right, so, so everyone who goes through the thrift, they see Thrasher shirts. Yeah. What's the difference between this Thrasher shirt and the ones you see at the thrift? So Mass the, sold at Journeys today. So the difference is that this is pretty much an original from mm -hmm. those shirts. Those shirts pretty much, they just go into their archives and look at graphics that were made and yep. popular in that time. And they just, we print them off this. But one of the, one of the things that lets you know it is an original, it's like you said earlier, the tags are always a good, yep. you know, kind of, I like to see it like as a birth certificate, honestly. This mm -hmm. lets you know the year, lets you know what it is and whatnot. For some brands like Disney, it's even a bigger birth certificate. Um, it also has a single stitch thread on the sides and the single stitch in the bottom. And also the collars are always a lot thicker yep. and it's always just one stitch all, about, all across the bottom. And there's something very cool about this shirt. Yeah, the, one, one of the really cool things about this shirt that, that I'm seeing is that this shirt is actually made by a famous artist named yep. Pusset. Yep. He is he, extremely he's famous yeah, for, what? for making uh, T-shirts for bands, uh, a bunch of just really good graphics. Um, Me Metallica, the Metallica, most noteworthy yeah, one. Yeah, Metallica most. So this print, even on, um, or this artist, even on modern shirts, commands a premium. Like you, you yeah. could buy a Metallica shirt by this artist and flip it for profit, even yeah. a modern even a one. Modern. But the older you go, 
the more and more and more it's worth. So do you know what the value of this one would be? I could say anywhere low 120, as high as like 220. Here's a dry red shirt and this is due to the sulfur that's in the material to turn the cotton black and normally you'll find this on dead stock shirts and it breaks your heart when you find it on a very nice dead stock shirt so how you can test if it's dry rot or not you can come down here to the hem and then if you could tear it that's dry rot so this shirt you could like Hulk Hogan out dry rot There's a bunch of New Orleans shirts here. He has three stores, one in Tampa, one in Houston, one in New Orleans. I always talk about knowing who's gonna buy your items before you even buy them. A lot of these items are going to him. He's a good friend, good buyer. He has what's regarded as some of the best selection of merchandise out of anybody. His stores are regarded as some of the most beautiful stores in the vintage community. So, I take pride in playing that. He gets a lot of this stuff for me. about this artist so he made this kind of art now this is a reprint what we were talking about but he is very well known and popular to making all the Metallica logos about clothes or sourcing or bag houses or vintage whatever you guys have questions about feel free to post them in the comments if you like these kinds of videos i have a lot of friends we can go to all kinds of places like this so whatever you want to see drop it below whatever you want to learn whatever you want to know drop it below happy to make a video for you Remember?
remember the last time that we spoke? You remember, you had a bunch of stuff, and I offered you $150,000 cash for all the grills that you had. This is this is one of those things where they ask me if you had a time machine or what you do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good, man. We appreciate your business for life. And if you ever got that $150,000 cash out, I got, yeah, that's what I'm, next time I, I message you or call you and tell you, hey, you want to cash me out? I'll make sure I have her on that. More than that in value, that way it's like a win-win for both of us. The money is always good. If you got it, we got it. Win-win for everybody, and it'll be a beautiful thing. And guess what? You can go out and buy more stuff. We can do it again. Go out and buy property. So I don't That's have it. to worry about stuff in the future. Absolutely. So appreciate it, my man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor. It's about 12 midnight. We just got back. We first headed down there around 6 o'clock. So we spent three or four good hours down there picking. We ended up coming home with an entire car load. I don't think we can fit a single solitary extra item or extra shirt in this thing. Um, the shirts were $1. The sweaters and jackets were $2. We got a couple thousand pieces. For eBay, we got a lot of good Patagonia, North Face, Harley, lots of good polo stuff. And for the brick and mortar store, you know, just bread and butter vintage. $10, $15, $20 items. But when you're buying, you know, thousands of pieces at a time, you're looking at, you know, 10, 15, maybe even $20,000 profit after it's all said and done. So, um, you know, the reason why this guy called me is because I'm known in the area to process and facilitate a lot of clothes. And a lot of people always ask and like, hey, how do you get the bulk deals? How do you get people know you? But it's just a matter of just being known in your area, networking, um, getting your name out there. And always doing good deals, never screwing anybody over, making sure your money is good. And eventually, you know, people will start calling you when they have access or when they have a good deal for you. So, so it's about 24 hours later since we went down to Miami to quick stop and bought the whole load that we bought, a few thousand pieces. We spent $1,792 on everything. And like I said, there was a bunch of polo, bunch of Harley, North Face, Patagonia, a bunch of great items. My friend Full Court just left here. He bought a fraction of what we got, and he, he paid $1,996. So we're totally in the clear. We're $200 profit, and I have a couple thousand items that are going to be 100% pure profit from here on out. But like I was telling you guys, when we're picking, we have to have the end buyer in mind. We have to know who's going to buy these items. And a lot of those items, maybe I would have left behind had I not had a buyer lined up. But all the vintage New Orleans shirts, I knew he would buy them because he has a store in New Orleans. So the closer we can get to having these items already sold before we buy them, the better off we all are and the better off it is. So I appreciate everyone for hanging out with us this time. We found a bunch of awesome stuff. And that $150,000 deal, he texted me and he asked if it was still on the table. So maybe we take that one down. I appreciate it. If you like the video, like and subscribe. And we'll catch everybody on the next one. Thank you.